Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and I could tell a joke about pizza, but it's a little cheesy. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called Robin Hood Sherwood Builders, developed by Me Astronauts, love the name, and published by Playway SA. Eh. Released not in early access, and selling for $30. So, as you'd expect, in this game you play as Robin of Loxley. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, it seems to take place quite a ways into the story, however. Robin has been back already and has already met his friends and already have the Merry Men hiding out in Sherwood where they've already got a little base built. Little John is there, Maid Marian is there, as is Friar Tuck. I guess this is taking place right in the thick of everything with all the introduction stuff already passed. I guess they're assuming you already know the story so there's no need to explain or introduce any of these characters. Regardless, you are Robin and it's time for you to build up Sherwood Forest. Start harassing the false king and the evil sheriff of Nottingham. That's the story. This is basically an open world RPG with base building mechanics and gathering mechanics. So as always, let's go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts. Alright? Up first, the good. So, the first thing for the positives is the graphics. The look of this game. It's not perfect, but it's still really good. I was really enjoying the art design here. The attention to detail, as well as the bloom and lighting effects, and the different color contrasts, the attention to detail... Wait, I think I mentioned that already. Anyway, everything just looks really good here for a smaller game like this, and I was honestly not expecting it to be so nice to look at, so it's a very pleasant surprise to see this much detail, and some of those lighting effects just really just made me stop and stare for a minute. Next up for the positives is the sound effects. So everything sounds just like you hoped it would. The sound effects of chopping trees, the sword fighting, the shooting of arrows, the ambiance, it's all there and it all sounds very appropriate. Then you've got the music, which isn't overbearing, but fits the mood and fits the overall theme. And last, you've got the voice acting. Now, for the most part, the voice acting is great. For instance, the guy doing Robin's voice is awesome. He's into it. He's putting forth his best effort. He sounds good. Everything works. But then you listen to Friar Tuck and... Well, I just... I don't want to listen to Friar Tuck anymore. It's good for you, as long as you have water instead of wine, good friar. I'm not swayed by this. Besides, those who sleep don't sin. I'll keep my wine. <laughs> I knew how you'd react. Take it easy, Tuck. Your cask supply is safe. I should think so. It's a strategic reserve for a time of crisis. Regardless, the overall sound quality of the game is above average, much like the graphics. The next thing I want to talk about is the gameplay. The gameplay is also going to be in the negatives, but for now, the good things about it. First, let me just try to sum this up by saying, if you took Assassin's Creed Valhalla, took out all the charm and giant production value, then you'd get this game. Open world, sneaking in tall grass, shooting, at, shooting arrows at people from a distance, assassinating bad guys, building up your base, collecting everything you get your hands on, even a, a detection thing where you hit a button and suddenly you get like this different color as you can see all the stuff collectible or bad guys around you. I mean, this game is so similar in gameplay to Assassin's Creed that it's just easier for me to compare the two, except the sneaking is not as good. All the components seem to work. There's resource gathering, there's crafting, and of course the base building. The base building is freeform, but it's within restricted areas, so you can't just build wherever you want, which in my opinion is a good thing. Lord knows what some people would do if they could, but the overall idea of the base building is incredibly interesting to me. It's actually kind of cool too when you actually get into it. It lets you build things the way you want and get rid of trees which gives you resources so you can build in that spot or you can build into the tree and it just lets you do it in this little area. Each thing you would uh, that you build gives bonuses to you or your people. You can assign your people to various jobs and you'll have to keep them fed and happy. All these things will provide positives or negatives to you and your gameplay. Then you've got the open world map with the detection mechanics so you can detect things nearby for gathering or assassinating. I mentioned that earlier hidden boxes to find, enemy bases to infiltrate, people to save. My favorite of these is the classic person being hanged by an arrow, but an arrow from your bow cuts the rope letting the innocent victim fall to safety, even though in my first experience for some reason it wasn't working. The point is though is it would have been cool if it had worked. You have to craft your own weapons and armor unless you get lucky enough to loot them. You have to craft arrows and you have to just really sink some time into the game in order to get the most out of it. You can't just play this casually and you can't just play it for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. There's just too much going on and too much to do. You have to actually spend a couple hours in this to really get a feel for the game. You have special combinations for combat, special kills, uh, skills you can use in various situations, a massive skill tree with so many skills I just couldn't count them all, and each of them useful in some way, shape, or form for whatever style of gameplay you wish to partake in. You have a reputation meter and an influence meter. There are regions in different sections of the map. In each region you need to, per you need to improve Robin's influence by doing things you'd expect him to do. Raiding caravans, saving innocent people from execution, slaying corrupt knights, and just generally protecting the innocent civilians from any kind of threat. You can do this 
or you do this, which raises the influence of each section, and once it reaches 40%, it starts a main quest for that region. Once you complete once you complete that main quest, it kind of locks the region and gives you bonuses and stuff, and you can obviously keep improving it for more bonuses and stuff, but it all passed by really quickly, and although I didn't get all the information, that's the gist of what I understood, which, by the way, it's not really that bad of an idea. It's actually kind of cool, you know, Robin Hood gaining support the more he does stuff in these areas. You know, that's, that's Robin of Loxley's territory over there. We can't send troops there, you know what I mean? Like, that's actually kind of cool. The point is, the gameplay here is seriously massive with so much going on uh, and going, it's just, there's too much to go through and, and to look at that I couldn't possibly get to it all here. And that's, that's just all the stuff that I've experienced so far and I still can't mention everything because I gotta keep this video short. For instance, there's fast traveling. You don't have to worry about traversing the whole map on foot the whole game. See? There, there's the last one before I move on. Anyway, I, yeah, I gotta move on from gameplay. The next positive point is the price tag. When you consider how much is here, the production value, the gameplay, the dialogue, the voice acting, the length of play, I mean, I can easily see this game lasting more than 12 hours with all that stuff, you know? That price tag is incredibly appropriate. So if it feels like too much money, don't worry about it. At the very least, the base game makes that price tag worthy. It's, you're getting your bang for your buck on this one. And the last positive point I have is the stability, the game. Despite its look and despite it just releasing, it had no bugs or glitches, at least none that I personally found. My game ran smooth as silk, it never crashed, never bugged, never froze, I never dropped frames. Nothing ever glitched out, so for my playthrough at least, it was very stable, and that's always awesome to see nowadays with today's gaming dev culture. Alright, so that's all the positives I got to say about the game, up next is the negatives. But before we go into that, did you know that my channel grows only through the loving support of my viewers out there? For instance, the only way I get more noticed and get more views is to already have them. I know, that's dumb, right? Well, that's where you guys and girls come in. Liking, commenting, and subscribing helps a lot, but sharing my content online and spreading the word of my channel helps even more. So if you could please consider helping me out just a little bit, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Now then, on to the negatives. The first negative I really want to talk about is the gameplay, despite all the good I just said about it. It's got plenty of issues too. For instance, the AI for the enemy NPCs is just terrible. If you happen to get a slightly higher elevation than them, they just have no idea what to do. You climbed a box and suddenly you're a god to them. The next thing is the combat. Overall, it's subpar, not very interesting, not very entertaining, with a lot of problems. Even with full stamina, Robin just isn't swinging as often as I'm clicking. There's literally no reason why he shouldn't be swinging his sword, but he's just not. Then you've got the fact that that's pretty much all you need to do. Just swing your sword aimlessly and then hold the guard button whenever they swing at you. It's boring. I, I don't know if you can dodge. I couldn't figure out how to dodge, so I'm not even sure if you can, which would have added some more entertainment and depth to the fighting, but for my playthrough, I just swung wildly at everyone and everything and always came out the victor. It was boring. Then you've got the archery and just don't don't even don't even get me started on this one. It's so bad. This is the Robin Hood, the master archer, best marksman in the kingdom so why is the archery design so freaking awful i thought the archery in assassin's creed valhalla was bad but this makes that look like a masterpiece he can only hold aiming his bow for like a second before it starts to wobble and wiggle and then another second before he loses his breath and loses his momentum and his aim and has to start over again basically you got one second to aim and fire a headshot before robin becomes below average with his bow you can't zoom in after you aim, you can't aim accurately, you can't fire far, and it's just terrible. Considering I'm playing as Robin Hood, THE Robin Hood, archery is the one thing I assumed would be the best part of the game, and it turns out to be the most disappointing. It was so disappointing I used my first 20 skill tree points to increase all that I could with those points to increase his archery, and it was still absolutely terrible. How could they do this? It makes me want to cry. Along with this, the camera angles can be really bad. Let me show you this clip again. I mean, look at this, I can't see shit! And I hit different buttons to try to change the camera, but nothing worked, so I had no choice. I don't know if you can change the camera or not, but this was ridiculous and awful. If you're gonna force me to zoom in this close to his back, at least make him transparent so I can still shoot at enemies, what happens if I'm cornered in the future again? Next up for the negatives is the user interface. It's ugly, it's difficult to navigate, at least in my opinion. You don't get a lot of tooltip bubbles, if any, so you'll have to click on everything to see what it is until you've played long enough to memorize everything. Anytime I had to use the UI, I was always annoyed and bored. It just, 
didn't look or feel right, and considering how many options they have in this game, why can you not turn off motion blur? I, I hate motion blur. And also, why is there no manual save button? Seriously, for a game like this, no manual save button. What the hell? <sighs> That's so freaking annoying. Like, I, I hate it when I see games that don't give me a manual save button, especially an RPG like this. The next negative is the tutorial. I mean, it's 50% good, 50% bad. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, they tried to make it interesting, but it ends up feeling very pointless and ridiculous. Teaching me how to chop trees? Seriously? They didn't even tell me how, they just said to do it, and that's supposed to be teaching me. Okay, I mean, okay, sure, I mean, yeah, it's easy enough, but still. And it's a lot of hand-holding in the beginning, but didn't they save most of the information for a separate codex style where you have to navigate through and find a paragraph of information on how to do something, read it, and study it? Like, I hate tutorials that do that. Just teach me what I need to know and have me do it at the same time. I'm not stupid. I can figure out some things on my own. I just need you to teach me, like, the basics or any new mechanics that pop up later. That That's it. Plus, I've, I've, I've already read online that some people are actually getting bugged out in their tutorial, and that's not okay. So, like I said, it's 50 good, 50 bad. They try to put character development and interaction and storytelling with the beginning tutorial, which is good, but they don't teach everything, which is bad. They leave out a lot for you to learn, to just learn later, I guess, and then they use most of the tutorial for you to study on your own private time to learn how to play, like you're studying for a test. Like, that's, that's just ridiculous. I hate it. I don't understand what the point of that is. Anyway, I'm sure I could come up with more negatives, but those are the biggest ones that I could think of right now. For the most part, it's fairly well written, with decent gameplay, innovative ideas, good graphics, good sounds, and it's quite grand in scale. But then it's got its clanky, awkward controls and gameplay, it's kind of lacking in depth in a lot of areas, and despite a lot of its ideas being good, the culmination of everything together makes the game feel a little too convoluted and just awkward overall. If this game was an early access, I'd be singing its praises, talking about how I can't wait for it to be finished because it's so good right now and I can't wait to see what, because this is such a great foundation, it, but it feels like it's an early access game and it's not. And that's what's disappointing and scary, which means some, if not most, of the things I've mentioned are never going to get fixed or changed. It's a large game with a lot going for it, but somehow it didn't really come together all that well. I'd say this is a perfectly average game, but I was expecting above average or exceptional, and so I personally am a little disappointed, especially for $30. If some of those things I mentioned don't bother you, then you'll end up really enjoying this game, with $30 well spent because it does have most of what is there is pretty good, but if you were expecting a more intuitive, well-designed, cohesive game, then I'd save your money. Honestly, you'll get a similar experience with higher quality if you just play Assassin's Creed Valhalla and probably get a better story too. So take that as you will. Do I recommend it? Uh, if you're desperate for an open world RPG game with elements of base building and it's on sale, then yeah, sure. It's not bad. It's just not great either. However, if you're looking for the next big RPG game with tons of depth and gameplay and immersion to really sink your time into, then perhaps you should look elsewhere. Honestly, the choice is up to you guys out there. I've given you the information and while it might not include everything, I hope this video was enough to at least help you come to a decision. So that's all the time I got for this video, everybody. Thanks so much for watching with a special thanks to you, to those who stuck around till the end. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.